to another episode of Ms. McIntosh's Music. Uh, today's lesson we will be doing our second music experiment and we will be making music using household items today. The, the materials required though are breakable so I do ask that you have adult supervision for this or at least ask before you get the materials. This is what is required for your experiment. Wine glasses, water, and optional Skittles or food coloring. So really only two things. I say wine glasses because you need a glass with really thin glass in order for this to work. So here I have a wine glass and water. Before we actually conduct the experiment though, we have to make some educated guesses. So we have to do a hypothesis. So in order to make sound, we know that we have to make vibration. We covered that in our last music experiment. So we will be making vibration by rubbing on the top of the glass. But the, the hypothesis I'd like you to make right now, and you don't have to write this down, just say it out loud. Do you think if I were to play this glass of water, it would make a different sound than if I were to play this glass of water? And which sound do you think would be higher or lower? So do you think a wine glass that has more water in it will make a lower sound or a wine glass that has less water in it will make a lower sound? Which sound will be higher or lower? Make your guesses now because we're gonna do the experiment. Here we go. So as you can see here, I have many different wine glasses. Some are bigger than others. Some are different shapes than others. And I have my jug of water. I have different shapes of wine glasses because I wanted to experiment to see what different sounds I could get out of different wine glasses. Now, in order to make the sound on a wine glass, it does take a little bit of practice. And sometimes if you're pressing too hard, it will vibrate too, too hard and it won't make the right sound. Or if you're pressing too gently, it won't make the right sound. But the most important thing is to make sure that your finger that you are using to play is wet. If your finger is dry, the connection just isn't as good. So I'm going to put my hand on the base of the wine glass. I'm not going to push down really hard. I'm just going to hold it there so it doesn't slide away. I'm going to actually add a little bit of water into this wine glass. And then I'm going to play it by rubbing the top. Now you can hear it vibrating because it's shaking around at the base. And if you find a different spot on your table or maybe a different way to hold it, you can prevent that vibration. So in order to show you how the wine glass is making the sound, I have this big glass here and I want you to see the vibration that's happening in the water because that actually represents the sound cycles that are coming through the, the water and coming to your ears. Okay, here's the wine glass up nice and close. I'd like you to watch around the outside to see the vibration. So this is still without playing and with sound. You might also be able to see how the vibration is following my finger. If I press harder, I can make the vibration a little bit louder, more aggressive than if I press gently. So now that we figured out how to play the wine glass and also how the wine glass makes it sound, it's time to test out our hypothesis. So whatever you decided at home, whether you think a less full wine glass is lower or higher versus a full wine glass is lower or higher, let's figure it out together. So dip your finger in water. This wine glass has a little amount of water in it. So we're going to play that one. So we have that pitch in our mind. I'm going to add more water to it. And let's see if it's higher or lower. That certainly sounds lower. So the more water that is in a wine glass, the lower the pitch. 
So with that knowledge, you can actually pitch your own wine glasses to try to figure out common songs. So for example, I have here pitched Do, Re, Mi, and So. So let's see if you recognize this song. Yeah, it's usually the first song that we learn on our instruments, hot cross buns. Now, in order to tell the difference between my wine glasses, I want to color them so I can remember what colors to play to play the correct notes. Kind of like boom whackers, where do is C, which is red, then D is re, which is orange, and me is um, yellow, which is the letter E. So what I'm gonna use instead of food coloring, I happen to have Skittles at home. Now, I don't want to color I don't wanna change the pitch by putting too many Skittles in each glass. So I'm going to be pretty cautious about how many I put in with probably three as the max. So I'm gonna do three red in this one. I need to find another red. I'm going to do three orange in this one. Three yellow in this one. And because this one is so, which is kind of the green it's not the light green it's a dark green i'm going to do purple and light green and see if that works and we will come back and see how the color bleeds into the water the best part of this experiment is eating skittles while we wait so as you can see the wine glasses now have color i'm going to play you a song and see if you can recognize it using my now colored wine glasses. Here we go. So take pictures of what you're, you've done, upload videos on the Google Classroom so I can see the experiment, have fun trying it at home, and lastly, enjoy a video of someone who has much more practice with this than I do. See you later.